I'm Kat Napsok for Anytime On Air, and here's a quick thought on a weekend full of Taylor Swift ruining the NFL discourse. And a quick catch-up for those not in the know. And if you're not in the know, please share the GPS coordinates of the cabin you're living in, because I'd love to hang out, be friends, and stare up at the stars until we both begin to question our true place in this universe. Also, you're probably hungry, so I'll bring some Uncrustables. But earlier in this NFL season, Travis Kelsey, the all-pro tight end for the Kansas City Professional Football Organization, got the attention of Taylor Swift of, you know, the Taylor Swift musical empire. and was like, hey, I'd like to take you out for a raspberry phosphate. And she was like, checking box, yes. Both 34, both titans in their chosen professions and both of them vaccinated. Good for them, I say. I trust that when they first made love, trumpet sounded and angels wept. The world watched as they seemed to first test the waters of young love. Taylor publicly burned by all her previous great loves. We can't forgive you yet, Jake. And Travis, a fan of naps and feeding squirrels bread. And then we saw them both slowly find their way through the media blitz to something meaningful. At least you have to assume it's meaningful because he showed up to Buenos Aires to give her a post-concert kiss and she showed up in negative four degree weather to cheer for him. That is real love, kids. If not, every one of those mid-budget rom-coms from the mid-90s lied to me and I can't live in a world where If Lucy Fell was dishonest. But along the way, Taylor had the audacity to attend the professional football games her new beau was played. She'd nestle into a luxury suite, mingle with his parents and Patrick Mahomes' wife, Brittany, and, you know, cheer on the dude she liked. And the television networks broadcast in the game she was at thought, you know what would be a good idea? Let's show shots of literally one of the most famous women in the world having fun at our games. Seems like good advertising. And yeah, they showed her a lot. And people kept covering it. And people kept posting about it on social media, internet websites like X.com, still known as Twitter to everyone but its owner. People kept talking about Taylor Swift watching football with her new boyfriend playing on the field below. The backlash was always just around the corner as it always is. The Kansas City Professional Football Club started to struggle. And yeah, I know what their team name is, but I'm not good calling them that simply because watching a stadium full of non-Native Americans bang drums and bellow out war chants as if they were indigenous people just isn't as cute as it used to be. Travis Kelsey, too, seemed to not be playing his best football. So, naturally, people started to blame Taylor. As if the fan base was suddenly Burgess Meredith as Mickey telling Travis, Making love before a match will make you weak in the knees, Kels. Is that Burgess Meredith? I don't know. It's close enough. And look, we sports fans are a bit superstitious. I'm a Miami Dolphins fan, and I haven't changed my Don Shula bedsheet since December 30th, 2000, the date of the last Miami postseason victory. So I'll spot the fan base some grace when the questions first started popping up. Perhaps Taylor Swift showing up to games was a distraction to Travis and the team. Perhaps. But, perhaps, that line of thinking was destined to go where it is now, directed solely at Taylor Swift, a strong, successful, hard-working young woman enjoying herself and not at some of the truths. Truths like the media blitz around these two might have been the problem, not her. That Travis not playing as well could just simply be that his Hall of Fame-worthy career is now 10 years old and a decade of intentionally recreating car crashes every game might finally be catching up to him, and that the National Football League pushes for parity and good teams sometimes hit valleys not easily understood in the minds of fans and pundits during the season. Perhaps it's those things. Oh, we should note that Travis finished the season with 93 receptions for 984 yards, stats most tight ends would take every season, and Kansas City closed out the 2023 campaign with six straight wins, knocked the hell out of my Dolphins, and have a great chance to return to the big game that finishes the season. You're not going to get me, NFL. So, yeah, maybe Taylor wasn't a problem at all. In fact, I know Taylor wasn't a problem, and the NFL knows it too. Travis' jersey sales spiked 400% in September after Taylor first showed up to a game. Then Travis and his brother Jason, an offensive lineman for the Eagles who probably enjoys feeding squirrels bread as well, just no one asks them, reported on their podcast in December that they are number one and number two in jersey sales in the United Kingdom. That's right, Jason's getting a bump just because there's a slight chance he'll be on Taylor's Pictionary team at the next family holiday. And this is the United Kingdom, where the only thing most Brits like to take from our country these days is political xenophobia, which takes us to this past weekend. Kansas City was hosting the Miami Dolphins in the Climate Change Bowl Saturday, January 13th, the day that will live in infamy, because that's when Taylor showed up to a game that was negative four degrees, but the discourse around her lowered it to 40 below. She had on a custom-made winter coat with Travis's name and jersey number on it, and she once again settled into a luxury suite, but not before posing for what should be the cover of her next Christmas album, and proceeded to enjoy the hell out of herself with her newfound football family. 
Before the game even began, we had started to hear the banging of the discourse drum when NBC football pundit Tony Dungy's comments on Fox News earlier in the week emerged from the cesspool of the internet. When asked to explain why less than 25% of Gen Z consider themselves an avid sports fan, Dungy blamed the disenchantment with the NFL on Taylor Swift showing up to games, saying when asked about the effect, and I most definitely quote, that's the thing that's disenchanting people with sports now. There's so much on the outside coming in, entertainment value and different things that's taken away from what really happens on the field. Yeah, it's Taylor Swift, coach. By the way, stop calling coaches coach if you're not on their team or didn't play for them. That's the kind of false glory that led to Tommy Tuberville thinking he could run for office. According to USA Today's story on Dungy's comments, the NFL had 82 of the top 100 telecasts in 2023. That's all telecasts. And I know how we watch TV has changed, but sports remain a water cooler program. USA Today goes on to report that the league saw a 17.9 million rise in viewership this season. So even if Taylor Swift being there is pissing off your uncle and his poker buddies down at the local VFW, those numbers numbers tell a different story. But in regards to the Gen Z stat, Tony's blaming of a pop star, a female pop star, for any actual measurable disenchantment conveniently overlooks that this younger, more socially conscious generation can see that the league has historically failed to understand the dangers inherent in the game and only recently seemed to make any strides, great or otherwise, to protect its players' brains. It rather openly ended the career of Colin Kaepernick after he simply took a knee during the national anthem to protest police brutality. But don't worry, they put up end racism logos at all the stadiums, and it has a noticeable officiating problem undercutting the integrity of the content. So until Taylor Swift overlooks an offensive lineman checking in with her as an eligible receiver, keep her name out your mouth, Tony. And... And the other side of that is a lot of fans are just like Tony Dungy. No, not the man who was an okay football player, but a Hall of Fame head coach, but the man who said in 2014 he wouldn't draft Michael Sam, the league's first openly gay player. Not because Sam's lifestyle was at odds with Dungy's deeply held Christian beliefs, but because he would be a distraction. Ah, okay. Fair enough, Tony. A distraction. Nice one. And I don't have a problem with you being a Christian either. Raised in the church myself, I happen to think Jesus said a lot of things that are helpful, insightful, and inspirational. And I'd love for Christians to one day pay attention to those words. But the Dolphins have a better chance of winning a playoff game, I guess. But go on, preach your truth. But that truth does seem to have in it a history of anti-LGBTQ social media posts, the raising of money to oppose same-sex marriage by speaking at events for the Focus on the Family-Affiliated Indiana Family Institute, and even in January 2023, retweeting a harmful and undeniably false anti-trans myth about schools putting litter boxes in classrooms for kids that identify as cats. For a more detailed summary of all this and more, check out Sid Ziegler's work on Outsports.com. Now, what does this all have to do with Taylor Swift? Is she part of the queer community or something? I don't know. According to Reddit, maybe. But I say if you have the chance to have sex with Travis Kelsey and Selena Gomez in one lifetime, take the shot. Take it like you're a World War II sniper fighting a tank to help Tom Hanks. What this does have to do with is Tony Dungy and many like him dog whistling to like-minded fools. Though still rather popular, there do remain some big issues with the NFL, including the fact that I had to pay six bucks to watch my team lose on Peacock. On Peacock. But none of them are Taylor Swift sitting in a luxury suite having the goddamn time of her swag surfing life. But all weekend, some of the internet's best examples of men to avoid at bars chimed in with their takes on Taylor being there. All of them dripping with that kind of misogyny and sexism that always comes out of the woodwork anytime the door is left open by people like Tony Dungy or welfare thief and unsolicited dick picker Brett Favre. Oh yeah, Captain Penis Polaroid chimed in on the issue when TMZ asked him about her being a distraction, and he said she would be blamed if they don't win the Super Bowl. Now, to be clear, Favre didn't say she was a distraction, might have been speaking a tad tongue-in-cheek, but he admitted she would be blamed and did nothing to quell that talk. And that's how this silly stuff, and I wish it was just silly stuff, seeps deeper and deeper into society as it has been doing in an unfettered fashion throughout history. Because I know what some of you are saying. Hey, me finding Taylor annoying at a football game isn't sexist. I'm not one of those misogynic miso misogynists. I like women when they're in their right place. My mom was a woman kept in the right place. Ah, but you are being sexist whether you know it or not. You are treating a pop culture moment as pointless fluff while not understanding the discussion around it keeps in line with our entire culture. And that culture has entrenched the patriarchal mindset in the mundane, in the silly, and in our daily discourse. It's the default setting, and it's destructive to everyone. And seriously, what was the over-under all you alt-right bros had on me using that patriarchy word you all hate so much? Minute three, I would have taken the under too.
That's how all these isms and ogenies work. Even good intentioned people, or even people who just don't like Taylor Swift being a sports fan, nothing more, nothing less, help fuel these harmful talking points that stand in the way of growth, change, and equity. Yeah, you cannot like Taylor. Yeah, Space Wizard Girl doesn't have to be your favorite character. Yeah, you don't have to have your life changed by the Barbie movie. I'm Kanuff, but you don't have to be. Not everything is for you, but everything is life-changing for someone. So, how you choose to communicate those ideas, who you align yourself with in these zeitgeisty moments, and who you choose to be when watching a woman at a football game matters. It either has great value or great consequences. And not understanding your place in all that is the true distraction. Just like Eminem at a Lions game. I'm Ken Napsok for any time on air. Oh, also, I heard those uh, rumors about Taylor and Travis maybe getting engaged soon. Taylor, Travis, all I'm saying is I'm an experienced wedding officiant. My rates are low. Good luck, you two crazy kids. Good luck.